A man who has lived in the United States illegally for two decades can now practice law. The California Supreme Court granting his license unanimously yesterday. It is the latest in a string of victories for undocumented immigrants. Advocates say they hope this case will open doors for millions of others pursuing careers in fields like medicine and education. So let's bring in our legal panel, former prosecutor Tom Kniff and California defense attorney Brian Claypool. Thank you for joining us. So a 1996 Thanks, federal law bars people who are in the U.S. illegally from receiving professional licenses from a government agency unless the state votes to grant them. So California lawmakers recently approved a law that authorizes the state to give law licenses to illegal immigrants. And that law took effect on New Year's Day. So the state's highest court said based on that new law, it had no choice but to uphold the granting of that license. Brian, what are the implications here? Well, Patty, first of all, a happy new year, by the way. Thank you. Same to you. Speaking of the new year, I, speaking of the new year, I think, I think Eric Holder from the U.S. Attorney General's office needs to make a new year's resolution that he's not going to waste the taxpayers' money anymore by fighting frivolous claims like this. Clearly, the state law allowed the, 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 the bar committee to issue a license to Sergio Garcia. So why the U.S. Department of Justice intervened, I have no idea other than to promote a, a political agenda. And, and shame on the U.S. Department of Justice for doing that and raining on Garcia's parade. The implications of this are widespread because other states are going to follow in California's path and allow non-U.S. citizens, for example, to practice medicine and other prof professions. So there are wide-ranging uh, implications. But I think this was the right ruling. All right. Uh, so, Tom, federal law still makes it illegal for other firms to hire the man, Sergio Garcia. He can start his own practice, but then it's not clear whether he can argue in federal court or in other states. So uh, does this create a lot of problems? It creates a lot of problems. I mean, first, I want to say, look, this young man's journey is admirable. I yes. personally think that he should be allowed to practice law in California and any other state that deems him uh, qualified. However, it, he, it, it should, we shouldn't be putting the cart before the horse. We should not be admitting to the bar, the state bar in California or anywhere else in the United States individuals who are not legally documented to work here in the United States. Why? Because it undermines the public confidence in our legal system. We have the best legal system in the world. We have the best lawyers in the world, if I do say so myself. Uh, you know, and there is a certain amount of prestige and exclusivity attached to that. If aspiring uh, law students, uh, aspiring college students, tal talented individuals feel that the prestige of the law, the legal profession, is being undermined because because of this ruling, is going to dissuade many of those individuals from becoming from from attempting to becoming law become lawyers. And in addition, it's going to undermine the confidence of potential clients when they go to see a lawyer. Hey, is this person even legal to work here in the United States? Brian, what about that? As Tom said, it is a heartwarming story. Uh, Garcia worked uh, in a grocery store and on farms while he was studying. He passed the bar. It's inspirational, except for the part that he's here illegally. Does it send the message that the end justifies the means? I, I, I disagree with Tom. This is the this epitomizes the American dream, and in terms of regulating lawyers and and their background and whether they're going to be competent or not, I've been practicing law for a few years and I've met a lot of bad lawyers out there who are not illegal immigrants. So I don't think that's the issue at all. The complaint I always hear, Patty, is, oh, all, all these immigrants come from other countries. They they sap our system. They they waste taxpayer money. They they yeah. rape our medical benefit system but here we have a perfect role model for not only the hispanic community but for all races come to the u.s work hard uh, he worked two jobs he worked on an uh, almond farm he worked at a grocery store Bri brian brian let, brian let, let me ask you one of the let, hardest let me ask law, you. law exams in the country brian when you when you took the Sorry. oath to be admitted to practice law you took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the laws of the United States. How does this individual, who by his own admission has been living here illegally for his mm -hmm. entire life, get past that oath? The, because the problem is not with Sergio Garcia, it's with the existing federal law. So he, he gets to choose policy? the laws that you he follows and once he law. doesn't? All right. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to have to cut you off there. Uh, all good questions, though, and we'll see whether other states follow suit. Tom Kniff, Brian Claypole, thank you both for joining us. Thanks, guys.